paints off the, the leg, I've given it a very quick polish, nothing uh, excessive because uh, it is a 50 year old bike after all, but I think that looks a lot better than grey primer even with its imperfections. So the next job is to uh, get 190ml of 20 weight fork oil. That'll do, 190 is close enough. The odd 0.2 of a mil ain't going to make much difference. Uh, and then we're just going to pour it straight in the leg and then we'll get on with trying to get this top cap refitted. Right, the process wasn't quite as tricky as I expected. The flats, I found a 21 mil spanner, it's not right, but it's the closest thing I had. And then I just used a piece of wood to protect my hands, pushed down and started it up. So my concerns about it being really difficult were unfounded. So we now have cleaned up fork leg, refilled with oil in perfectly usable condition with new bushes for the caliper. So this can go back on. I'm just going to clean out the holes where the forks sit. Just to make sure it's nice and clean. Please excuse the distracting uh, yellow background. Just this was covered in dust sheets because I'm in the middle of painting some bits for the BSA project. And in the brief interlude, I'm doing this, so I don't want to uncover it all again. So. top one's pretty clean anyway. Right. A thin smear of grease to uh, encourage movement. That's nice and loose. I'm going to spread the fork again with the screwdriver. And then uh, I'll bring you back. Right, the bottom yoke spread, everything's greased up. Basically, it's slide it up. Um, the flats on the top, the flat part's got to be next to one of the flat parts, has got to be next to this bolt hole. So when the bolt goes in, it uh, won't go in properly if it's round there. And presumably, it's part of the security mechanism. I don't know, but either way, that's what's got to happen. So, try not to get in the way of the lights. There we go. So just double check the flats in the right place. It is. Make sure it's all the way up. Which it is. Top cap. I'll just turn you off because I'm going to have to walk around in front of the camera because I'm working in a restricted area, as I say, because I'm busy painting something else in another part of the garage. Right, having got the fork in, the more observant amongst you will probably have noticed my deliberate mistake. I'm just doing it to make sure you're paying attention. I forgot to fit the uh, covers. So it's the fork back out again. Right, we're back to uh, where we were a couple of minutes ago, so now we have the shrouds on. Slightly mucky shrouds and slightly mucky forks, but anyway. The chrome's not perfect, but uh, it looks an awful lot better in my opinion, than having it sprayed matte grey. So if we just uh, come up slightly to the top of our forks, which about there, the flats are in line with the hole like I said, 
we're going to put our top screw back in so rubber bung first no, that's not keen so let's turn that out again put the rubber bung on the bolt and then put it in is that better? Yes. Right. Yep, seal's going into the hole, which is what we want. And back to our very large adjustable. save the final tightening of that until there's some weight on the bike or else it will just keep spinning the, uh, the fork leg round and round but with the wheel in the weight on it they should tighten up nicely which just leaves the removal of our wedge and torque up our bottom clamp bolt which should be 22 pound according to the uh, there we go. right one rebuilt fork well not rebuilt because i've done the seals but one tidied up fork a bit covered in oily fingerprints now but uh, that'll all polish up again rebushed ready for the caliper so there's the comparison can you see that no you can't let me just drop you down again slightly there's a comparison between polished and gray Polish definitely does it more for me. So I'm going to take the second fork out and do precisely the same job on that. Check it over, make sure the seal's okay. If it isn't, I'll show you seal replacement. And then uh, we could put the cowls back on and start sorting out the electrics because I want indicators on this bike. So we need to sort that out as well. I won't show you any of that unless I come across something different because it will just be a repetition of what I've just done. Right, it is literally 30 seconds since I turned the camera off to start on this side. And I'm bringing you back straight away because I did say I'd show you anything unusual. Well, I went to undo the bottom clamp bolt and there isn't one. So the whole fork is free to just unscrew, which frankly is really quite worrying. So I'm going to have to find out the size of the bolt and get that replaced. There does appear to be threads in there. No obvious sign of damage to the thread. So where the bolt's gone, who knows? But another reason for checking out new bikes, definitely. I really, I mean, I, I suppose with the weight of the bike on the fork, it was never going to come out. But uh, pretty, pretty unpleasant thought that you'd be riding around without the bottom yoke clamped firmly to your forks. Anyway, let's see what other horrors lie within. Right, the uh, second fork leg. It's had all the paint stripped off it, polished up, shrouds are on, um, and I've temporarily fitted the front wheel because it will be getting a new front wheel, but this tyre is hard, it's probably usable but it's a bit hard, and I'm waiting for a new tyre 
and a new inner tube because the wheels that are on here have got the large hole for the rubber inner tube and the new ones which you'll see later have got the small hole for the metal inner tube so I need a new inner tube, a new tyre, a new rim tape and then we'll put the wheel back on. So just to finish the forks off I have a new bolt to replace our missing one for in here so we shall fit that and torque it up and then the front end will be left for a short time until those parts arrive to do the wheel. I am still deciding at the minute whether I should just paint it all before I start using it. I haven't decided. I suppose it depends how well the rest of it goes and how much time we have. Here we go, 22 pound. So I'm a bit happier now the forks are at least assembled in the way that the factory originally intended. So next I think we'll move on to the back brakes because I need to sort out more of the electrics but I know there's a problem with the back brakes because when I took the saddlebags off, I discovered an issue which I will show you now. So I think I'll do what I did to the front, strip it all, rebuild it all, and whilst I'm waiting for the parts for that, I'll sort out the electrics. So, back brake next. Right, starting up front with a forward control master cylinder which is, as I said in the walk round, which is in the previous video, the first video I did on the uh, shovel head. Uh, it says dot five brake fluid only, which given the age of the vehicle, clearly isn't right. So I'm going to have to drain some of it off and test it, which I'll show you in a minute. But before then, it appears at a quick glance you've got a bolt here, a bolt on the other side there and of course your brake line which is a simple 3 8 which I have a spanner for in my hand and I have a small glass jar to collect some of the brake fluid because I want to look at it. A quick, uh, a quick peek in there and it looks uh, pretty old and horrible so a rebuild is in order I think. But first, that hole must be to stop that turning, I'm assuming. So let me just go and get a screwdriver for that. Alright, fit. Yes, it will. Good, right. So if we undo this, whoops a daisy. I have to do this backwards so I don't get in your way. I would normally work over this way. Let's get that out. Hmm. I'll stay. And if I'm right, this one. Oh dear me! We'll turn that, which it does. So there we go. And then before we go any further with that, our three eighths to release our brake pipe. There we go. You can't actually see the union from where you are, but it's a bog standard metal brake pipe with a 3 8 union. So nothing very exciting. Well, I say that, to be honest, every part of it's exciting at the minute. Right, let's try again. Put that through there. I'm trying to make sure I don't spill any because I want to save this fluid to test it to find out what it is. So that 
coming undone. It is, but slowly. There we go. Washes there and space it out. So let's try and. Oh! Now then, the fluid itself looks lovely and clean. The inside of the cylinder doesn't. Okay, that's interesting. So that will need cleaning up. So. Let's move you to the back end and have a quick examination of that. Right, so now we come to the disaster zone that is the rear caliper. Now, whoever owned this bike before had those country and western throw over pannier style things on the back. However, they omitted to fit any bag supports, which is uh, very foolish. And it's perfectly obvious that the rear bag's been bouncing around off the caliper because it's worn a section away there. Now, I'm not sure how deep that is yet until I take it all apart. But let's just say I'm actively looking at the minute to see if I can find a second hand caliper. We shall see. The tiny bleed nipple, like the front, is almost completely rounded, so I'm going to have to get some heat in there and try and get some mole grits on that to get it off. And the wear of the bags has even taken the side off the brake line fitting. Which would have to come off anyway because the outside rubber is split exposing the internal braid. So really an accident waiting to happen. The only thing I'll say which is good is the disc is uh, not ridged and has clearly been working over some part of its area. So the caliper was probably working. There is a Second hand front caliper on eBay at the minute. Now I know the front and rear are different because they're stamped up for front and rear. Exactly what that difference is, I'm not sure. To be honest, I really don't know. Um, I'll have to do a bit of uh, research and try and find out. But for the moment, I'm going to try and loosen that if it's at all possible. That'll stay on until I get the caliper apart and get some heat. So again, like the front, it's the four bolts and get that off. And we shall see what we shall see. It's already fitted with uh, an aftermarket caliper support bracket. But as you can see, there's wear in the pins just like at the front. So a new set of bushes in the support bracket, new pin if I'm using this caliper, we shall see. But first of all, we need to get that off, don't we? If only I had the right spanner. There we go. Oh well, at least it moves. So that's okay, that can stay on until I'm ready. So, split the caliper halves. I may need my strong arm for this. No, that one's not bad. That is that one. Oh. Oh. That one was a bit tighter. Right, I'll bring you back when I've undone these and no point watching me undo four bolts. Okay, that's the bolts undone. That's how part comes in. 
caliper. Oval pinholes again by the looks of it. And somebody's tried to uh, use gasket goo. Again, the pads are not that bad given how thin they are when they're new. But anyway, more gasket goo on that side of the caliper. Worn out securing pin. Oh dear, that's the bush. You saw me having to force in on the front forks. That's obviously absolutely knackered. There's a pin. No doubt it's also knackered. And that bush, I don't know if you can see that, that bush has actually almost completely disappeared. It might just be starting to touch the alloy. So I think we've got it just in time if we're going to try and rescue this. The uh, dust seal's knackered, our pin's knackered, usual stuff really, just like the front. I'll have to see if you can get oversized pins for there, or which is another caliper. Right, let's undo this. Oh, come on. This is a problem with it being uh, damaged. Once it turns past a certain point, you can't get a spanner on it. Try that one. Here we go. There we go. Right. What a mess. So that's going to have to come out, which means Rear brake stay, rear wheel, all that sort of stuff. Right, well I'm going to have to move the bike before I do that, so let's go up on the bench and take a closer look at what we have removed. Just see what we're looking at. Right, uh, I used exactly the same method as I used on the front brick caliper to get the piston out using the uh, blow gun, which worked considerably better than it did in the front caliper. So I should have shown you that one rather than this. Sorry, I should have shown you this one rather than that one. But anyway, there you are. Popped out straight away. So that's going to need new seals. So it's been sitting for a long time because it's... Uh, Really quite disgusting. The uh, dust seal is damaged, that needs doing, so we need both of those. Now I'm going to tip this out on the bench so you can see what's inside. Yuck, doesn't really do it justice, I don't think. Unbelievable. Really, really terrible. Anyway, let me just get a piece of paper and we shall wipe that up. What a mess. Now. Need to get that cleaned out really well to find out if that bore is going to be reusable. 
The pin we know we can go oversize on, so I'll grind that off and have a look, and I'll see if we can get the bleed nipple out. If I can do all those things, despite the wear on the caliper, it may be saveable. As I say, I'm going to check the difference between front and rears. As I say, there's a front on eBay at the minute. If the difference is something I can change myself, then I will get a new caliper half, or a second-hand caliper half. I'm not in the market for a new one at the minute, that's for sure, because the expenditure of the BSA is quite high at present. So this would have to be pressed back into service in the short term at least. Anyway, let's see if I can get the bleed nipple out. I'll get rid of that and then we'll just check the size of that hole to make sure that our replacement will take up the slack in that. So I'll bring you back when both of those are out and see what we found. Okay, we're on the uh, macro lens just to show you this. Like the front one, the threads were not corroded. There's only a bit of corrosion on the end. But it was so tight that it ended up like this. Getting it out, it was incredibly tight. Lots of heat. And then eventually, it came loose, but not before causing all that damage. I really did think this one was going to be stuck in. I'm sticking with the macro lens. This is the piston, the side of the piston. The rubber seal fits in this groove here. That's where it contacts the pads. And the anodizing, as you can see, is uh, perfect. And also the inside of the piston. Sorry, the inside of the caliper, not the piston. The inside of the caliper is also uh, in extremely good condition. So it's a real shame with these calipers that they're let down by some basic engineering flaws because given these bits are nearly 50 years old, the important bits are actually still in remarkably good condition. So on the damage front, can we, can we see that? I don't know if you can see that properly. I think it's still in focus. The damage near the uh, main hose feed is superficial. The damage near the bleed nipple, let me see if the focus is a bit better. It should be in focus now, hopefully. The damage near the bleed nipple is obviously considerably more as far as depth goes, but the nipple actually goes in more at that angle. So by the time you reach any fluid, you're down here and well in. So there's plenty of meat still between the essential parts of the operation, the hydraulic parts of the operation, the piston chamber, there's plenty of meat between the, between that and the outside where the damage is. So as long as these pins will drill out to the right size, it's usable until I can find another one. It's not perfect, I would prefer it if it wasn't like this, but I am willing to take the gamble on this because as I said, I've checked all the various orifices and the damage is well away from any fluid areas. So that really just leaves it's a little pain the macro lens I'm afraid. I'll just uh, refocus you again. Hold on. Right now the hole on the outside actually looks pretty good. It's very minor ogling on it, nothing 
horrendous. I'm sure that would stand the oversized pin. However, if we turn it over on the other side, let me just bring it up there. I think we're still in focus, hope we are. You'll see the overling is considerably greater. Now, I suppose the important thing here is how far that overling goes in relation to the depth of the caliper. So if most of it is reasonably straight and only the edge of it's ovaled, it will repair. If it's ovaled all the way down apart from the outside face which doesn't look too bad, then I don't think it will. So let me just have a quick rummage in my drill bit box and we will get out our 12.5 mm drill which is what we're going to be using because that's the one we used in the front um, and I will have to turn you off again and move you around because it's going to be right in front of the camera. So as you can see our 12.5 mm gets swallowed by the ovality on that side. And looking at the drill bit, we might just get away with it. Let me turn it over and show you what I mean. That should be roughly in focus. See on this side it's bang on. That will cut cleanly right through. So on that basis I think it will probably stand a repair because if need be I could use bearing fit or something around the inner edge or magic metal once it's all bolted tight left to go as long as it's square there should be enough to keep it square I'm hoping Right, so I need to investigate oversized pins, if at all possible, because they are quite wobbly on this half. And then I'm going to have to take the support plate off and see how badly worn it is and see if it'll take new bushes.